Hello friends! Welcome to the March 2022 plan with me. If you're new here, my name is Canova. As I was preparing to set up this March 2022 theme, I started out with one thing and sort of ended up with another. And so the story is really about being flexible to new ideas even as you are going through the process. So at the beginning of this process, I started with just wanting to do another Max Done Minimally spread. This is really about my personal style. I'm much more of a maximalist when it comes to bullet journaling. I use it as an opportunity for me to really express myself and an opportunity to try new art ideas. I really want to sort of stretch myself in my bullet journal, but also stay organized. So I started out thinking I'm going to lean into stamps. I'm going to use some heat embossing to create this beautiful theme based on the floor de lis. I had a couple of different stamps that had this particular image on it and I was experimenting with patterns and well on my way, had chosen colors. And then as I was doing that process, I thought I would really love to incorporate a floral. The next thing you know, I was drawing these poppies. I found the process of drawing them very easy and enjoyable and they're so beautiful. I find poppies so beautiful. So I decided, you know what, let's just do a poppy theme because I just kept having all these ideas floating my brain on how to do a really great simple poppy theme and this is where we are at present. So I did a couple of different sketches of these poppies and ultimately I decided that I wanted to do them simply in the white outline in black and that I was going to use the heat embossing tool to outline them. I painted some, I used marker for others, I used watercolor, but ultimately I I came back to this idea. I really wanted to add a little bit of sort of texture and sheen, and there's nothing like the heat embossing to do that. You can see there on the scrap paper where I was working with the floor de lis. So you're probably wondering what I was doing. I used a anti-static tool all over the page, and sometimes I forget to use it and it creates a mess. You'll see where I forget, forgot to do it in a moment and how uh, there's a big difference between the two pages. But I use an embossing pen to draw or outline the images and I'm using the embossing pen here to create the font. This was a great font I found on Pinterest. I keep a typography folder on Pinterest with just fonts that inspire me. I couldn't find the actual name of this font, but it really is just like a line font with a leaf motif that's added to it. Now, I use the static tool to sort of anti-static the page so that when I put the embossing powder on the page, when I remove it, it's just sticking to the embossing lettering that I put on the page. I use two different embossing powders. You can see I did that one at a time so that each one has an opportunity to stick and there's no mixing of the two. This is really straightforward. I am going to be using a Dutch door and I clean as I go because this powder gets really messy and you're using very little of it and then you put it back into the container. Now I'm erasing my pencil marks. You should do this right after you sort of ink in the images the first time. If you notice, I ink them in with a uh, fine liner. I used the Pigma Micron and then I went back in with my uh, embossing pen in order to get the liquid for the embossing powder to stick to onto the image. I sometimes get ahead of myself and you can see when I make mistakes. All right, so this is the mistake I was talking about. I forgot to use the anti-static tool on the page. And so you can see right here where there is excess 
powder and it just does not want to come off. So I'm sort of stuck with this additional powder in places that I don't want it. There's nothing I can really do about that. So I just make this decision to move forward. We make these videos and we make mistakes too. So just keep going and hope for the best. It's not um, unsightly, but it's not what I wanted initially. All right, so I am cutting a Dutch door. I'm using an X-Acto tool to do so. I'm gonna do some more heat embossing later and I'll take you step by step through the process. So I'm going to cut out this Dutch door edge, this floral edge, and I am going to use it to be a decorative moment. Now I made the decision to do tabs, not the single little tabs you might find if you were to buy um, file folders, but just an overall tab. So it's kind of like, I guess, a, a staircase or descending. So you get the pages get longer or fuller as we go along. I pre marked and cut these. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use washi tape on these pages. At this point, I hadn't decided what washi I was going to use, so I was experimenting and trying to figure it out. Um, but ultimately, I decided to use the purple and a matte black. So I'm alternating between the two. I'm putting washi on both sides of the page, and then I'm going to go in with my X-Acto and um, cut off any excess. So the taps can be seen um, basically from whatever angle you're looking at it so if you start push moving the tape the pages excuse me you'll still see um the tabs you'll be able to see the decorative edge on all of the the pages this took a while to do but i'm pretty pleased with how it turned out all right so i'm only going to show you one weekly i don't think it's necessary for you to see me do all five pages i am using the alistair method uh it's a version of the Rolling Weekly. I guess you could say it's the original Rolling Weekly or this idea for the Rolling Weekly came from the Alistair method. If you are interested, I guess I could do uh, a short video on that, but I talk about it quite a bit in past videos and why I decided to use it. And I am still absolutely loving it. All right, so my mood tracker is one of my favorite things. I love to come back and connect with my bullet journal at the end of the day. I do so to do, you know, traditional bullet journal things like rapid logging, um, putting in, in new activities, making sure all the things are done at the end of the day. But also, this is just a beautiful moment for me to sort of think about my day and disconnect from it a little bit. So it's almost like I get to sort of leave it on the page. I decided to create a vase of poppies and again just keeping it really simple. Drawing these poppies is really quite easy. I drew a bunch of circles on the page to represent the number of flowers and then I decided to mix it up and add a different flower in just because I thought it would be visually more interesting once everything was colored. But you draw a circle or an oval or a shape in whatever sort of direction you decide where the center of the flower is. I drew that center and then I just am drawing basic wavy petals. There are obviously, you know, different directions a flower can go, and I highly recommend finding a source image and um, giving it a try. It really was pretty straightforward. In the case of these flowers, the only thing that I had really pre-drawn was the circles, so I was just simply going in. Now, again, I had not pre-sketched it all on this page, which is my line of day. I come in at the end of the day. It's just part of my process. And I write how my day went. And I uh, do that every day. Sometimes I forget because I get really busy. February, my line of day was, there's a, there's a few spaces where things didn't come together uh, because February was just a really busy month. I felt like a... Um, a ball rolling downhill for the most for the most part this month uh, but I'm, I'm getting everything done which is a testament to um, the journal and how it keeps me organized so static on the page 
you go in and draw with your embossing pen you add the embossing powder you get rid of the embossing powder and then you move your heat tool around and it creates this sort of beautiful glossy texture and it comes in a variety of colors so whether you're doing um, poppies or something else entirely or lettering it's a great tool now I'm using two types of embossing powder in case you're wondering you see two black one it has like sparkles in it a metallic and the other one is just plain black both of these I would have to check but I believe they're both by Ranger which makes a lot of different great embossing powders all right so I purchased the Archer and Olive um, tool for um, bullet journaling creating boxes and tabs and I just wanted to try it out uh, if you have been thinking about it this is a great tool to purchase you uh, it had been uh, part of I guess a freebie and then it was available for purchase on the site I'm not sure if it's still there if it is I'll leave a link in the description box I skipped this calendar page which comes right after the cover page because I just was thinking what am I going to do because that embossing ink went through to the other side sometimes these things happen and I kind of have forgotten I do have a clear em embossing pen but I but you can't really see what you're doing so I always like to use the black but ultimately I decided to go back into my Archer in Olive notepad and use a sheet of black paper and then I used the tool from Archer and Olive to figure out how many uh, boxes I needed to create or recreate rather the calendar. Below is where I put the bills and what they're going to be for the month, sort of my bills tracker. And the side over there is a monthly rundown. It's just a quick place where I can put all the things that I need. I'm going in with my Uni Ball Signo metallic pen. I love this pen and I am using the same font but in miniature um, on these other pages. So this month I worked mostly out of order. I didn't necessarily do one thing at a time. I really just sort of flowed and did what I felt I needed to. I'm going in with stamps with some gold Archer and Olive ink to stamp my numbers. I like to be economical, so I usually get one number and then I go in and stamp all the numbers. You'll see me put a page in between and I'm doing that so that the ink doesn't transfer over and I don't necessarily have to wait for it to dry. Oh, you can see another Fleur de Lis moment there, an idea that I had. I still might do that Fleur de Lis. I know I probably will do that Fleur de Lis. Um, I just need a little bit more time to let it marinate. All right. The final flip okay I'm really gonna miss my circus spread if you haven't seen that setup you should check it out I'll leave a link to it in the description box so my only regret about these spreads is that mess up with the um, embossing powder if that hadn't happened I think I would be really satisfied with the way this spread came together and sometimes mistakes like this black calendar are the best things I wasn't planning on having a black background but it has a really great visual impact and I don't know why I didn't think of it to start I am considering going back into these weeklies and using highlighters on the left hand side um, alternating so that I can have an easier time of finding items but we'll see I may not I'm looking forward to um, completing that tracker to see what it looks like in the end I hope that maybe with the simplicity of this spread which is by far the simplest spread I have ever created that you try to recreate some of the uh, setups yourself there's lots of great tutorials on um, poppies on YouTube if mine was not clear enough. If you like this content, please like and subscribe and put a flower emoji in the comment section if you made it to the end of the video. See you next time.